Welcome to this episode of Dish Repair. Today we cover an Italian sports car. Now I know when you think of Italian sports cars, you think of cars like Lamborghini, Ferrari, Bugatti, Fettuccini. But today we're covering the weirdest Italian sports car I've ever seen. What is your definition of a sports car? Is it an exotic design? Is it rare? How about being mid-engine? A two-seater with a target top? Functional side scoops, chin splitters, fairings, and a wing? How about aerodynamics for more than just looks? What about a car in brilliant colors, with alloy wheels and a manual gearbox, and a lack of being reliable and not very practical at all? If that's your definition of a sports car, then like your coworkers, this one barely meets expectations. Well, you've probably figured it out by now. It's a Fiat X9. Actually, it's X19. What does that stand for? Repairs per mile. In the early days of racing, the first car across the finish line was frequently a Fiat. Lessons learned in those days have made the Fiat X19 perhaps the best all-around sports car value on the road today. Mid-engine traction for handling, five-speed transmission for performance, and the best mileage of any two-seater sports car sold in America. Manufactured by Fiat from 1972 to 1982, and it was designed by Bertone. Hence the name. It came with a transverse mounted engine and it was known for its fun and funny removable hardtop and the ability to somehow meet US safety regulations. That's a typo, right? I mean, that's humanly impossible. The engine was 1290 cc's and capable of making a well-intentioned but anemic 74 horsepower. Although they aren't rare, they are rare to see today due to most of them suffered from rust. Who's rust to rust, amen. And wiring issues. When I first saw this car, I immediately thought of an American car, a Fiero. But then I also thought of a Japanese car, an MR2. And I thought, what if an MR2 and a Fiero had a vacation in Italy and had a love child? That would be this car. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. So this thing showed up, came off the trailer, total basket case. Brakes didn't work, the interior was all taken apart, parts were just in the trunk. The trunk didn't close, they strapped over it, which kind of messed up the paint. I mean, just uh, I, our first impression was, uh-oh. So was the wiring any good in this car? Well, it's a Fiat, so no. This was this was the most difficult wiring situation I've ever run into. It has yellow wires, red dots, red dots with yellow wires. I mean, it's just, everything has the same color wire and it goes to different stuff, it makes no sense. So originally he was gonna put 2.2 liter uh, Dodge Turbo in the engine, like from a Dodge Daytona. Um, so they did a lot of modifications, cut out the cross member, cut out the, uh, the divider between the uh, engine compartment and the trunk, and uh, just made a real mess of things. So it has an odd transmission. Tell me about that. It's really odd. It's, a, uh, it's actually a Dodge, like from a Dodge Sundance, cable shifted transmission. Not meant to be there. There's no mounts for it. We had to come up with a system to mount it, make custom mounts, to put it in there. It also had a clutch that operates on pull instead of push. But this light cylinder pushes, mm -hmm. in this case it had a pull, so we had to make a bell crank to pull the clutch instead of push. So tell me about how you got the motor into this car. So it's a Hyper 9 motor um, with a Dodge A523 transmission. There's not an off-the-shelf solution for that, so we'd have to custom make an adapter for that. We also had to custom make a clutch disc to adapt the, the size of flywheel to the splines of that transmission. Other challenges, you said the speedometer was a real challenge on this, definitely not. Oh, yeah, like everything else in this car, I had to make a custom solution. So the Dodge Sundance transmission has a VSS on it, it doesn't have a gear, and these were driven off of a gear. Yeah, we had to make a, a custom print, 3D print a piece to adapt those two things together. Seemed like I saw like a Dakota Digital box in there, is that right? Is yeah, that so it's a, that's a Dakota Digital, uh, they, they convert like VSS or GPS signals to uh, revolutions for a a uh, mechanical speedometer. You know, you got the clutch, you got the transmission, you got the motor, but you still have to get the power to the wheels. How did you tackle that problem? So they don't make an axle for this, obviously. We had the uh, custom-made axles, axles from Dutchman. Um, they have the Fiat X19 uh, pattern on the CV, on the, on the hub, and they've got the Dodge uh, splines on the transmission side. Tell me about, there's there some other things that were just missing that you would normally run into on a car like this. Something about the engine mounts or engine braces. Can you tell me more about that? Oh yeah, so the, the rear area, there's a divider between the engine compartment and the trunk. Mm -hmm. 
and they had inexplicably cut out the cross member there, which is where the deck lid attaches to and the engine cover latches in. So we didn't have hinges, latches, cables, or that cross member to even close the trunk. So a lot of the customers that are people that convert these cars are always worried about the weight balance before and after. So tell me about how the weight balance has been affected by an EV conversion. Well, we didn't have a before weight, didn't have an engine, transmission, anything yet, but the after weight is about 2,420 pounds with a 4852 weight distribution. So very it, well balanced. For once, we lucked out on this car because it had heater channels that ran from front to back that actually worked perfectly as conduits for the high voltage wiring. And that protects it from if you've got low clearance like this car does. That's right. Like Otherwise, these things would be dragging on the road. It had factory air, but by all accounts, factory air wasn't that great, so it was all removed. It had a vent air system for it, but the vintage air system was missing the pigtails to plug it together. Um, problem, I think it was purchased on eBay, one of those things where, you know, mismatched parts, things like that. Um, and it wouldn't even fit under the dash. Did you see where I fit it? No. Like, I fit it back here like this. That's where it actually ended up fitting is back here. You have, okay. to, take, you have to take the fan off, you slide it back there, then you put the fan on through here. Okay. So I did figure out how to fit this stupid thing in the car. It was important to us that the air came out of the factory vents in the car, but it had a, uh, an interesting design for how the uh, air came through the registers from the original system. So we took that, we uh, custom drew and 3D printed uh, register adapters for the factory registers to the two and a half inch hose that the vintage air system uses. The owner gave us a requirement that the target top still be able to fit in the front. So how was that? Was that, did you accomplish that? We did. The battery box sits low enough and the mounts are high enough that yes, the top still fits exactly where it would fit originally. I, I take a bit of pride that it's on the road now. I do, because this thing, you think about all of those cars get handed from shop to shop. A lot of these cars end up in the salvage yard by, or parted out by the end of it because they get so hopeless. I mean, to, to get it back on the road, that, that's, a, that's something we can take some pride in. <laughs> I think I'm not a tall guy, but I barely fit in this thing. This is my first time to drive this car. Let's see. Where's reverse? There's no shifter knob. There we go. Here away we go. Put that up, please. Can you just put, it, put it up, please. Good enough. Okay. All right, here we go. So far. I feel like I'm in a go-kart. Like, literally a go-kart. You ready? Oh yeah, it runs good. The gears are a little hard to find. A cable shifter. Yeah, but it, when you get it, you find it, it gets it. That was like 75 miles an hour. I'd say it's one of the faster ones we've done. I think the curb weight on this car was like, what, 1,900 pounds? Yeah, 1,900, something like that. So it's not bad. I didn't know the pounds on it. It's right here. Oh, there you go. This is order here. Let's see if we can hold the camera. Holy shit. Oh. Yeah. Uh, not too bad. Not I bad, not bad, not bad. I mean, it handles good, obviously, for a little short Italian sports car. Brakes, you know, right. that was one thing I didn't really check before we left. I, the brakes? I didn't really uh, try the Here's brakes. Here's your window. Out. Done. It's up. Try that in a right. drive through have to be real honest. Compared to the other cars we've done, I think the Volkswagens drive better. And the Karma Ghia, I think it, it's a better driving car. But like I said, there's still people who love these things. Oh yeah, that's fun. Oh yeah, that makes me that feel Italian all... right there. Oh, yeah. like we're in a, you know, countryside. I do feel like I'm dragging my butt on the ground though, you know? Yeah, I mean like you feel, you feel like... Very low. Very, very low. Like I don't know like, how this would do this on car, speed bumps. I would say it, it, you could, you feel like you're going to drive under. Exactly. You know, like, if, you're build, if you're driving a Fiat, 
you have to be an enthusiast. You know, the EV conversion part of this is, uh, I mean, I'm definitely, I can, you know, I think it, it's a better car. I didn't get to drive it before because obviously it didn't run because it's a Fiat. We're just having to go by his word that it sucked. But, uh, yeah, not too bad. I'm going to take another corner here, scare Brent the camera guy. Scare me. It's all going. Or how those tires are. Beautiful. Who knows? <laughs> you know what it's like? You know what this car reminds me of? It's like riding one of those tandem bicycles where you're on it and you think, man, this is the most fun I've ever had. And everybody that sees you go by this goes, what are those guys doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, okay. it's good. We're just fixing to do like a uh, okay. turn around. So, <laughs> see ya. They thought we were broke down because we're in a Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> So one other thing, I guess, would I do this again? Would, would we say do an X19? I think if you had a better one, like one that was nice, that was uh, had nobody else to touch, because this car came from another shop. Uh, I think if it was an unmolested original, Brent likes the word unmolested. But uh, if it was a just a primo one, you could probably EV swap it, it wouldn't be too bad. Some kicks to it. Oh, yeah. Third gear, fourth gear, seven fifth. It does. Nice. Size speed. Okay. Who knew? At the end of the day, would I build a Fiat X19? Absolutely not. But I will tell you, the owners of these cars are just as enthusiastic about their vehicles as we are about ours. And I got to hand it to them. These cars are difficult to work on and have a lot of challenges. Despite all that, they have a huge following. And I do hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. Everything on this car is a surprise when it works. Every once in a while you're reminded this pulls hot air out when it, you get your hand in between. What well, has four letters, starts with F and ends with T. No more clues or hints? Then it kind of stinks. Feet. Wrong. Almost got you in the face. <laughs> What are you guys doing? Hey guys! Hey guys, what you up to? Hey, what you guys doing? I sure want to be included. <laughs>